thank you, thank you, Bishop, uh, for introducing me well. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Good morning. Praise the Lord. We are excited to be here, and I want to honor Bishop Jimmy and Mama Alice for the invitation. We are very honored to come to Deliverance Church Zimmerman. They are our friends and uh, of many years, and Bishop used to preach to us when we were in high school, in college, and so there are people I have watched closely because the grace of God is upon them. And so I must say that you're blessed to have these servants of God, and may you receive the word that they give you all the time. They have put their lives on the line, they labor for you, and if you receive the word, I am sure that your lives are changed. Praise the name of the Lord. And so I want to thank God for all of you. I have many, many friends here. Some are friends of youth, like our sister Rose and Dan. Those are people we have worked with. We were in the same church, brought up by the same parents. He, her father was actually our, our reverend. And, I, and I, I know there are many, many others here that are my great friends. But this morning, I want to bring the word of the Lord. Because the Lord never gathers his people in the Lord. He always has a word for us. I'm excited that he speak to us this morning. So I want you to just give me your attention for the few minutes that I have. And I believe that the Lord will speak to us. Amen. And uh, before we pray, I just want to read the word of God in Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. You can give that, please. Jeremiah chapter 1. It says, The words of Jeremiah, son, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests who were in the land of Benjamin, we're going up to verse 9, to whom the word of the Lord came in the day of Messiah, the son of Ammon, the 13th of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, the king of Judah, until the end of the 11th year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the carrying away of Jerusalem, captive in the, uh, the fifth month. Verse 4, then the word of the Lord came to me saying, let's continue, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Verse 6, then, then I said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Verse 8, do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my word in your mouth. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for gathering us together this morning. We thank you because of the opportunity we have, the freedom to come together, to worship you, to hear your word, Lord. And I pray that this morning you will speak to us even as you have spoken to us since we started this morning. Use me as your mouth. Peace, Lord, that, Lord, you may deliver your word to your people in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. And so today I came with a message which I, uh, is from the Lord, and the message is about the calling. And I came to tell somebody that you need to fulfill your calling. Praise the name of the Lord. That is my message this morning. And I want to say that, uh, you know, since I gave my life to Christ, the first calling is actually the calling to come to Christ. Praise the Lord. And the Bible tells us in Ephesians that we are saved for good works. We are saved because there are works that the Lord prepares for us before the foundations of the earth. And that is why you are here this morning. That is why you are a child of God, because there is a calling of God of your life. And after receiving Christ, then there is a call of God for you to serve him. Praise the Lord. And I want to submit to us that, you know, God can only use people. Praise the Lord. The Lord would want to do so much in this world. Because he has a kingdom, and his kingdom must be advanced. And he uses people. Glory to the name of the Lord. Can you just tell your neighbor, he uses people. Praise the Lord. 
And you know, in the history of the Bible and of humankind, whenever God wanted to do something, he called an individual. He called a woman, he called a man to go and fulfill his purposes. He tells, you know, Isaiah 61 talks about the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the prophet was speaking prophetic words. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me. And then he lists things that the Lord had him to do. He says, he has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. There are poor people in this world that need to hear the good tidings. Glory to the name of the Lord. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. You don't need to go far. You just need to wake up in this country every day to know there are people that are brokenhearted. Glory to the name of the Lord. And somebody has been called to declare and bring healing to them. And then he says, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Hallelujah. Do we realize that there are many people that are still bowed? You know, the, the church of today, we love it when we gather together. We love it that we have freedom to come together. But you know, we only come together on a day like this and any other day to be serviced. Praise the Lord. To be filled again so that we can go and set the captives free. Hallelujah. And the opening of prison to those who are bound. Glory to the name of the Lord. The, this was Isaiah speaking prophetically about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I came to submit to someone today that there is a call of God over your life. Every believer has a call of God. And I pray that at the end of this day, you will not be comfortable anymore to just sit in church. And then go home and feel good and say, you know, I am grateful. The Lord saved me and the Lord has blessed me. But you will realize the call of God in your life. And I came to encourage somebody who is already in the, in the work of uh, fulfilling their call. And probably they have gotten weary. I came to tell you, you need to fulfill your calling. Praise the name of the Lord. And so Jeremiah, we have just read about Jeremiah. And you know, the call of God does not necessarily come, uh, it doesn't actually come according to our timing. It doesn't even come because it is comfortable or it is convenient. The Lord calls his people. And here he came to Jeremiah. And Jeremiah actually is a type of Christ. He was a weeping prophet. He wrote the book of Lamentations. And we come to Christ and we see him also going through suffering for the sake of of the people of God. Here is Jeremiah. He is born in a priestly family. He is born in a pastor's family. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know whether there are children that are born in pastor's families who always feel like, I don't want the call of God in my life. It is so difficult. I have seen my parents suffer. I don't want it. But God can call even the children that have been brought up in the house of believers and of, of the servants of God. And so Jeremiah is actually just around 17 to 20. And you know, the Lord speaks to him and, and he, the word of God comes to him. The word of God is coming to Jeremiah at a time that Israel has sinned against God. They have fallen short of the glory of God. They are rebellious. They are worshipping idols. And Jeremiah, a young man, you know, at 17 to 20, all the way probably to even, you know, 25, you really don't want the entanglement of ministry. For many of us, I remember when I was in college and I knew for sure there was a call of God in my life. And God was calling me, especially to the children's ministry, and I resisted it. I actually resigned from being, a, from being a coordinator of the Sunday school in our college because I felt inadequate. And I came to tell somebody, the call of God will come to you. And many people, most people that have the call of God, they don't feel adequate. Praise the Lord. But yet, we need to obey that call. And so it comes to Jeremiah. And Jeremiah is wondering, how can I take up this task? It was a very difficult task. Because he's being told to go and declare judgment over Jerusalem. He's being told, tell them they will go to captivity. That was not an easy message. And Jeremiah says, ah, ah, Lord, I am just a young man. Praise the name of the Lord. I am just a young man. And you know what? The call of God will come to you. It may come to you, but you are dealing with issues. Maybe you have been divorced and you tell the Lord, Lord, you cannot call me to this ministry. My marriage failed. 
probably you've been bereaved. You are a widow or a widow. The Lord is saying, I have a ministry for you. And let me tell you something I have come to know. When God calls, the people God calls, he will break you. Because he cannot use a vessel that is not broken. Some of you are going through some very difficult things in your life. But watch carefully and pray to the Lord. Because through whatever you are going through, that is where your call may come from. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, the, the, the assignment was heavy. He was supposed to, you know, he was going to actually ravel the feathers. And he felt inexperienced. He felt, you know, probably he was looking forward to a career, to get married, settle down, enjoy life. Many young people feel like, you know, I don't want to be called into ministry. I want to enjoy my life. I want to be free. Praise the name of the Lord. But the call of God was upon him. And what does the Lord tell him? Tell him. He tells him, no, don't say you are a young man. Don't say you are just a youth. I have work for you to do. But I love what the Lord tells him. He tells you, first and foremost, I knew you. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. My sister, my brother, I want to tell you, this was not about just Jeremiah. But the Lord knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. Before your parents ever came together, the Lord knew you. And he knew he had a ministry for you to fulfill. And so what he did, when I think about the formation of God, he's being told, I formed you in your mother's womb. You see, there is such comfort to know that we are known. Glory to the name of the Lord. There is even a greater, greater confidence to know that the Lord forms. He formed Jeremiah, he's telling him, I formed you in your mother's womb. And so I put gifts in you. I, I put some personality in you that aligns with your call. Glory to the name of the Lord. He had given Jeremiah a tender heart. A tender heart for the things of God. That is the formation of God. And we are formed for the call and the assignment that the Lord has given us. There are people here that are very good counselors. Because the Lord formed them and he made sure that they have a, a listening ear. They can listen to somebody carefully and bring encouragement and bring healing. There are people who are formed to sing and worship. A sister here has led us so well to worship the Lord. It is the forming of the Lord. Glory to the name of the Lord. And I came to tell you, you are formed for your assignment. Amen. Can you tell your neighbor you are formed for your assignment? Praise the name of the Lord. If I came here and tried to lead the worship, you can be sure you are not going to be very happy people. Because probably I will not get the key. And I will get the rhythm wrong. <laughs> and then after I've sung one song, I cannot go to the next one. But there is somebody who has been formed by God. That they can lead us to worship the Lord. There are people who have been formed to preach the gospel. They can preach and preach and preach. Praise the name of the Lord. There are people who are formed to be encouragers. That just you are smile to somebody going through some broken heartedness. And they come back to life. Praise the name of the Lord. The forming of the Lord. And then he tells him something else. I didn't just form you. I sanctified you. I set you apart. I came to tell somebody, you need to stop fearing the call of God. You need to stop fearing the assignment. The Lord has already sanctified you. You know, I, when I used to, uh, you know, when we got married to Bishop Peter, I had never really wanted to be a pastor's wife. Actually, I knew I would never be a pastor's wife. Because I didn't want it. Praise the name of the Lord. I didn't want it. I didn't want the, the trappings of being in ministry. I wanted to be a free woman. I can come to church and probably don't have to come, you know, and then come for the second service and come for the third service and then I stay on in the evening. I want to leave church and go and take my children to Java. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to be free. And you know what? I, he kept telling me, we need to ordain you. And Bishop Mulandi from Thika, because he's my bishop, he's the one who brought me up. Every time he saw me, he used to say, I am coming with the horn. And I would say, Bishop, no. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. I am not ready for it. I didn't think I had what it takes. Leave alone to be a pastor, to be a pastor's wife. 
but the formation of God, the sanctification of God, the choosing of God. He has sanctified you. By the time your bishop is saying, we need to ordain you, we need to, uh, to anoint you because there is a ministry in you, God has already done it. He only confirms through you the servant of the Lord. Glory to the name of the Lord. What you need to do is obey. Praise the Lord. You just need to obey. And then the Lord tells him, don't be afraid. I came to tell somebody, do not be afraid. You have what it takes to fulfill the calling of God in your life. Don't be afraid. You can do it. Why? Because it is the Lord who enables you. God actually came to Jeremiah and he tells, he, he put the word in his mouth. He laid his hand on him, put the word in his mouth. And the word started to burn in Jeremiah. That later on in the later chapters, he says, when I decided I will keep quiet, I will not proclaim his word, then his word was like fire in my bones. There is a ministry in you, and some of you have been trying to get fulfillment from everything else, but I came to tell you, your fulfillment will be in, in fulfilling the call of God in your life. That is when you will be satisfied. Praise the name of the Lord. Some of you ran off there to do all sorts of things, but the Lord has been saying, I sanctified you. I have a word for you. I have a ministry for you to do. Glory to the name of the Lord. It was not just Jeremiah that struggled with the call of God. All through the history, we see people struggling. If you read Je just Judges chapter 6, we see the story of Gideon. God comes to Gideon when Israel is so impoverished by the Midianites. They had sinned against God. God had brought his judgment and he's using an, idol, an idolatrous uh, nation, a pagan nation, to actually uh, really strip them of everything. And the Bible says there was so much trouble that they would be pressing, you know, they would be threshing, threshing the wheat in the wine press hiding. They were actually living in caves. And, they, and God comes to, 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 to Gideon. And he says, Gideon, arise. I have some work for you to do. What does Gideon say? Ah, uh ah, -uh, Lord. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Why, if you have been with us, why are we abandoned? If you have been with us, how come we are going through so much trouble? And the Lord says, you are a strong Praise the name of the Lord. Rise up in the strength that you have. You are strong. You are able to, to, uh, to deliver Israel from the hands of the Midianites. And you know, he actually helps him to do so. And when Gideon is even surrounded by a great army, the Lord says, ah, ah, I don't need all these people. Because it is not by power, not by might. It is not the armies. It is not the people that surround you. It is not the people walking with you. It is the hand of the Lord that will enable you to fulfill your calling. Glory to the name of the Lord. Everyone who has been called by God feels the heat of the calling. And I just want to say a few things about the, uh, the, the calling of God. I want to submit to you, one is that it is God who calls. The calling of God is not of men, it is God. He only uses his servants to confirm what he has already uh, done in your life. And the Bible says in Ephesians 4, 11 to 12, So Christ gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. Why does God call people? Because he wants the church to advance. He wants the church to influence the nations. He wants the church to be a positive influence in society. Brethren, we need to rise up. When we see trouble, when we see pandemics, when we see abandonment of children, when we see poverty, when we see people suffering, we need to know that the Lord has called the church. There is no other people he's going to use. It is the church. But you see, the trouble is, we think the church is the pastor. We think the church is the worship team. We think the church is the ushering team. We think the church, it is the deacons and elders. The church is you and me. Glory to the name of the Lord. And God will use you because there is no way Bishop uh, Jimmy and, uh, and Reverend Alice will reach the people you will reach. Wherever you work, there is a ministry for you to fulfill. 
Wherever you live, there is a ministry for you to fulfill. Some of you are living around people that are miserable, going through a lot of trouble. And even when there is trouble there, you want to call Bishop to come and pray for them. You are a minister of the gospel as a believer. Praise the name of the Lord. And you need to rise up and say, where I live, where I work, people need to see the church at work. Glory to the name of the Lord. If you don't get anything else from me, I want you to know that it is you the Lord has called. Praise the Lord. There are people for you to reach. There are people that need healing. There are people that need encouragement. There are people that need to be brought back to the way. There is a young person that is miserable and lost. Yesterday I saw two young people, a beautiful girl, and I could tell she was really high on, you know, some drugs or something. And my heart felt really ached for the young people. The Lord is calling us, saying, rise up. It is I who calls. The calling of God is not the calling of man. Amen? Number two is that the youth are not too young to accept the call of God. You are never too young. Jeremiah was a young man and throughout history God has called even young people to come and fulfill the calling of God. The other thing I want to say is that the calling is a journey not a destination. Praise the name of the Lord. And so for those of you that you know there is a calling of God in your life and you are already fulfilling that calling. I want to tell you it is a journey. And this journey sometimes there will be discouragement. There are some of you that have sat back because you got discouraged. There are some of you that have sat back because somebody said you cannot sing properly. Because somebody said you did not do it right. It's because you got a burnout. Because you got frustrated. There will be frustration as you try to fulfill the call of God. But you need to stay the course. Praise the name of the Lord. Because calling is a journey. Actually, in every season of your life, God can call you to different ministries. Praise the Lord. Some of you started probably in the children ministry or archery, and then you find the Lord took you to a different kind of ministry. And as you continue to walk with the Lord in prayer, in reading the word of God, in fellowshipping with him, at every season of your life, the Lord will reveal the call of your, li of your, of your life in him. Praise the Lord. It is a journey because our lives are ever changing. And that means that even the call of God, as you continue to grow, as the Lord continues to, to refine us, he actually continues to call us into certain ministries. Maybe you are very dreary in whatever ministry you are doing, because now you need to have shifted. Praise the Lord. And I came to shift somebody today, to say, hey, listen to the Lord. What is he saying? In this season of your life, what is the Lord calling you to do? Glory to the name of the Lord. And I want to say, I, I, I think I've already said that, there, is, there will be weariness, there will be burnout, praise the Lord. And that is why when we are even fulfilling the call of God in our lives, we need to get a time of refreshing, we need to be able to get rest, we need to be refreshed by other people because there can be burnout. There can be frustration, there can even be rejection. Jeremiah was rejected. These people actually at one point they had a plot to kill him. But you know what the Lord had already told him? They will try to attack you but I am with you. And I will protect you. Glory to the name of the Lord. You will even be rejected. Sometimes you are rejected by the very people that are very close to you. Praise the Lord. I hear one pastor, you know, he, he resigned from being a pastor because every time his wife told him, you are not a good preacher. You really, I don't think you are called. <laughs> and he resigned. <laughs> but we need to be God pleasers rather than men pleasers. Praise the Lord. And we need to know when it is a frustration from the devil through rejection and discouragement. We need to know when it is the devil attacking us so that we rise up and continue on with the call of God. Sometimes we will be discouraged because there will be no money, no resources. You know you have been called probably to form a wonderful choir here, but every time you, you, you approach a sister and another brother, and you tell them, let's form this choir, I feel the Lord has called us, and everyone says, ah, uh -uh. no, 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 no. And maybe the two and a half that come, then are never committed, and you can easily give up. But you need to continue on to, with the call of God. Praise the Lord. 
So whether there is discouragement, weariness, dis whatever it is, I want to tell you that you must fulfill your calling. Because the Lord will ask you of it. Praise the Lord. There will be a day that we will stand before the judgment seat of God and the Lord will reward us for the work that we did. Will the Lord say, welcome home, good and faithful servant? Because you have fulfilled your call. You must fulfill your call. Paul was talking to the church in Colossians and his last, his last words to that church, he had greetings for different people. He was giving greetings from different servants and he points one person called Akipas and he says, take heed to the ministry which you have received in the Lord that you may fulfill it. I came to tell somebody because Akipas is not here today. Today it is you, Jane, and, and Rose, and, and Mary, and whoever else, and Daniel. I came to tell somebody today, take heed. Amen. Take heed. Fulfill the ministry that the Lord has given you. And I have no doubt there is somebody here that you sat back, and the Lord sent me today to tell you, take heed, to fulfill it. Glory to the name of the Lord. Take heed and fulfill the ministry. And I want to tell you that there is grace supplied for the fulfillment of your call. Paul had a great calling of God. This great man of God who was a great teacher of the word. And, that, and he had a thorn in the flesh. And so every time he felt like he was not fulfilling the ministry as he would have wanted, he would have wanted to be more comfortable. And, and there was a thorn. We don't know what the thorn is. There are people who say it was his body. There are some who say it was a sickness, that his eyes were weak, whatever it was. We have thorns, praise the Lord. And many of the people that are called, let me tell you, there is a thorn. A thorn that makes you walk carefully. Because if you don't walk carefully, it will be too painful. Praise the name of the Lord. Sometimes it is a sickness that won't go away, whatever you do. Sometimes it is your children that don't seem to conform to what you have taught them. You know you taught them the way of the Lord. You taught them the ways of God and you knew that they would never depart from it. And they departed and it becomes a thorn. Some, it can be anything. But you know what the Lord told him? I am not taking away the thorn, but my grace is sufficient for you. Glory to the name of the Lord. The grace of the Lord is supplied for the ministry that the Lord has given you. It is possible to do it, even with that thorn. Praise the Lord. When that thorn is painful, tell the Lord, I know your grace is sufficient. And continue on. Glory to the name of the Lord. He called people like Moses who was tamarous. You can imagine what it was like for Moses to go to Pharaoh. Pharaoh it was a very powerful king. This man needs to be convinced to let Israelites go. And, and Moses is a stammerer here. You can imagine what was happening. That he goes before Pharaoh and he says, Let, 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 let my, 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 my people go. And Pharaoh would be thinking, who is this that has been sent to me? And he would say, get away from me. But you know what? It was a thorn. But the Lord said, no, even if you stammer, I will actually use Aaron to speak on your behalf. But I will still have you fulfill my call to you. Glory to the name of the Lord. It doesn't matter what excuses you've had. I don't know you, whether you can have a greater excuse than Moses. Glory to the name of the Lord. Being a stammerer. I don't know whether you can have a greater excuse than Gideon or Jeremiah. The grace of the Lord is sufficient. Why? He says, because my power is made manifest in your weakness. That weakness that has really been, you know, a hindrance for you. I want you to know that the Lord has supplied the grace for you. His power is made manifest. He touched Jeremiah and put the word in his mouth. It is the Lord who will touch you and enable you to fulfill your calling. Put your trust in God. Praise the Lord. Because and answer his call by faith. You cannot do it by your own strength. But by faith you can receive the call of God. Hallelujah. And I want to also tell you that the call can be miserable. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But there is peace in obedience. The call is not always easy. 
Sometimes the servants of God pay a huge price. Huge price just to fulfill the call of God. Hallelujah. Jeremiah at one point found it miserable. And he says, I will not make mention of him, nor speak of him anymore in his name. But his word was in my heart like a burning fire, shut up in my bones. I, am, I was wary of holding it back and I could not. He was miserable sometimes because he's telling people, you know what, you're going to go to exile. He's telling people who have built their nice houses, who are settled in their land, and he's telling them, you're going to exile. You are going into captivity. It was miserable. But when he kept quiet, it was more miserable. Praise the name of the Lord. There is joy and fulfillment when we obey the call of God. Hallelujah. Align yourself with God's will through prayer. Prayer is a place where you confirm your call, where you reconfirm your call, where you get settled in your call, where you continue in your call. Prayer. Because it's a place, your secret place with God, that he will continue to confirm it and give you power even when you feel like you cannot do it. Glory to the name of the Lord. Paul was telling the church in Philipp uh, uh, the Philippian church, verse, uh, verse six, chapter 1, verse 6, the Lord himself shall complete what he started in you. Just as Jeremiah was told, I will be with you, I came to tell somebody, the Lord will fulfill what he started in you. Keep, stay on course. Glory to the name of the Lord. How do you recognize the call of God as I finish? One, of course, is prayer. Ask the Holy Spirit. He will tell you what he has called you to do. If you have gotten weary in your call, ask the Holy Spirit. Prayer is a place where you hear more from God. Studying the Bible. When you study this word of God, not just reading through and, and you know, just going away, but taking time to study. You will study characters of the Bible and see how God worked with them. You will study different uh, areas of ministry in the Bible. The, when you study the word of God, you are able to recognize your call. Praise the Lord. And also, seeking wise counsel. You have your pastors, you have your bishop, you have your other leaders. They can help you to recognize your call. Because sometimes we don't even realize the call of God we have until somebody else points it out and says, whenever you do this, we get encouraged. You just had a few words with a sister who was going through trouble and she came back and said, from that day, my heart was settled. You can actually know even from other people that are trusted and that are wise. And also, how do you know the call of God? Through service. Glory to the name of the Lord. It is as you serve the Lord that God continues to reveal the call of God in his life. So are you just sitting down all the time coming on Sunday, waiting for other people to serve you, you know, and you criticize? You know, the people who don't serve, actually, they criticize very easily because they don't know the heat. Glory to the name of the Lord. They don't know the heat of standing here to lead people to worship. And you don't know where they are coming from and whatever burdens they have in their hearts. And you stand here and you want to take them to the presence of the Lord. When you don't serve, you criticize. But if you want to know your call, rise up and serve the Lord. Glory to the name of the Lord. How wonderful it would be that if all this, uh, in this church, everyone took up their place and said, I am serving the Lord. Zimmerman would be changed. Glory to the name of the Lord. Kahawa West would be changed. Gedorai 44 would be changed. Nairobi would be changed. Because you are so many. If you would rise up and take up your rightful place. And say, I will serve the Lord. Some of you have been called just to call people to come to church. Just to tell somebody, let's go to our church on Sunday. That is what God has called you to do. If we would all rise up, let me tell you. When we come here, it is a place of miracles. It is just God moving in a very great way because it is servants of the Lord coming together. And everyone is saying, fill my cup, Lord, because it is empty. Because you have been emptied as you are serving the Lord. But you see, Bishop, we preach to people who are not empty. They are full because they have so much in them and they are not depositing it. When you serve the Lord, you come here empty. You don't care what anybody else is doing. All you want is the Lord that he may fill you again. As you serve the Lord, you will identify your calling.
Glory to the name of the Lord. Will you fulfill your call? I came to tell somebody, you may have gotten weary, you are frustrated, you have, or you're on the verge of giving up, you're on the verge of coming to tell Bishop, I don't think I will serve again. I came to tell you, see to it that you fulfill your ministry. Glory to the name of the Lord. See to it that you take heed to the ministry which you have received in the Lord that you may fulfill it. Will you fulfill the call of God? Will you answer the call of God? I want us to just stand up because I feel this is a, this is a word that needs a response. Glory to the name of the Lord. And humbly I would want Bishop to just come and just pray for these people. Because I feel that the Lord has something that he would want to do in their lives. I came to tell somebody there is a call of God in your life. And you need to fulfill it. May the Lord bless you. And let's be found at the place of service. The place of prayer. The place of reading the word of God. And when we hear the Lord calling, let's say, yes, Lord, I will go for you. Amen. God bless you. Lift up your heart and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive your word. And I receive your call today. Give me strength and the grace to fulfill my call. Today, I repent of all unfaithfulness, lack of commitment, lack of dedication. In the name of Jesus, I am now arising. I will stand. I will walk. I will fight. In the name of Jesus, I will not be put down again. No more reasons. No more complaining. I will stand by the grace of God. I will fulfill my call. And before I leave this world, I will do what I was made to do. I receive the grace Lift up your hands. I receive the grace. I receive the power. I receive the anointing. I receive the favor to fulfill my calling. World, come on, world. Here I come in the name of Jesus. I am strong. I am able. I can do it. I can overcome. In Jesus' name, receive it now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Somebody give the Lord a praise for what he has done in your life today. Come on, celebrate your new calling. Hallelujah. Celebrate what the Lord has done in your life. Celebrate. Come on, come on, somebody. Somebody here is moving to their destiny. Somebody is stepping out by faith. Somebody will be used by God here. Come on, come on, come on. Somebody is receiving an anointing here. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. Let's celebrate the woman of God for the great message. Glory to God. Thank you, Reverend Faith, for that great message. Hallelujah. Look at two people and tell them, I am a different person. From today, watch my life. See what God will do through my life. Wambia kwa kiswahili, tazama maisha yangu sasa. Kwanzia leo, utaona. Wewe ni mushahidi. Vida mungu atatenda kupitia maisha yangu. Nimeamuka, ninatembea, ninainuka katika jina la Yesu. Amen, amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much.